Hello, my name is Travis Collins from DreamingWell.com. The purpose of this video is to show you my custom implementation of a display object list for Flex Mobile. As you may know, Flex Mobile 4.5 ships with an icon item renderer that can be used in a list. The icon item renderer is very efficient and it shows static images, bitmap images, JPEGs downloaded over the internet, FXGs, those kind of things. However, it's not very useful when you want to have a list that contains a display object that's driven by data. So for example, as you can see on the screen, we have some data that defines having a red checkbox and a green button and a blue checkbox and various item renders. You can't do that with icon item render. So I've created this display object list to be as efficient as possible, but clearly it will never be as efficient as displaying a static image. Display object list should only be used whenever you want to have data-driven, interactive display objects in your list. So, well, let me show you around the demo first. You can see we have a list here. Clearly it has some checkboxes and buttons in it that are display objects. And if I click on one, you can see that I've got some logic in here that changed the object to a black rather than blue, the display object here. And then we can switch back and forth between different types of display objects to prove that our our list is really driven by these, these very standard display objects. Alright, so now let's take a look at the code. In the code attached to the article, you will find a display object list mobile app. And it's just a basic app. It doesn't have a view navigator or anything in it. Down at the bottom of this app, you will find the display object list implementation. And the important points to note are the display object function, right here. We give it a default of this data-driven display object function. We give it a label field, just the standard label field, display name, and then we have some data driving it. Here we've created some test value objects. All right, so now let's go look at this data-driven display object function. The display object list uses this function to, to retrieve display objects to be shown in the list. Because display objects are quite, can be quite large and can be uh, very memory intensive, it's always best if we reuse an existing. However, unlike an item renderer where you can go and say every item renderer in this list is the same and I want to use the same type, we can't do that for a data-driven display object. So the best that we can do is return the previously used display object in hopes that maybe it can be reused to be returned back to that list. So you'll see that our, our function takes an item, this is the data driving the item render, and then the, dis the previous display object that was used in that item render. So in the best case scenario, we can take the previously used display object, modify it, and return it. That way we're not creating a whole new display object. So you can see here, for example, uh, we can use the component type property off of the data to see if we're going to have a checkbox or otherwise it will be a button then we can create an instance of that uh, of that checkbox or button as long as the previous display object wasn't null. You can see we use previous display object here. And then as long as it's the same class, so before it was a button and now we're using the checkbox, clearly we can't reuse it, but we can create a new button or checkbox. All right, and then we'll statically define a width and height. You have to do this for some display objects because they don't have a, a native width and height. Uh, a lot of custom display objects do, the native ones and, and flex don't. And then we can use the item color here to update the color. You can set the color any way you like. These just happen to be spark skinnable components where we set the chrome color. And then finally we return the display object. So that's a run through of the function that returns the display object to be used in the list. The rest of this shows that the display object methods that in, the, in the list can be used to dynamically drive the data as well. So you'll notice that when I clicked on the list, an item in the list, the display object turned black. So that was simply here in the change handler for the list. I changed the selected color to black. This is just to prove that the data-driven uh, features that you're used to also happen, can happen with the display object. Really what happens here is you set the color when any property on the selected item changes or on the data that's driving this, the individual render changes, the render recalls this data-driven display object function. You update it, hopefully using the previous display object with the new color, with the new settings, etc. 
you return it and then of course it shows up in the view. All right, and then finally, the uh, buttons at the top here, where we can switch back and forth from static to data-driven display objects, prove that we can change the display object function dynamically, uh, and the display object will be updated on the screen with the appropriate information. So at the very top here, you'll see we have a radio button display object function, and we just return it a radio button. Notice here that we don't actually ever use the previous display object, so. Uh, that's not very efficient. Clearly, we would want to do that, but that's not the point of this, this static driven function. All right, so now you may question why did I extend list and make display object list rather than just simply implementing display object item renderer? I found it more simple. You can use display object item renderer anywhere you like uh, on its own. You don't have to use it with display object list, but I gave some convenience functions here for set display object function and and uh, and a few others. So you can override these with anything you like. I just found this a lot easier. Finally, uh, as with any list, the data that drives your list, in this case, has to be a strongly typed object so that it dispatches uh, property change events. This, this bindable tag here makes that happen. So you want to make sure that you're using bindable uh, value objects so that the property change event will occur. And that is display object list.